Good afternoon, Albertans. We hit the day. Today is the day we go into part two of Bill 32 and its unconstitutional provisions. This time we're focusing on the police here in Canada, specifically Alberta, and the powers that the province is trying to take with Bill 32 against the police, okay? So this is kind of a big deal. We're going to get into American and Canadian policing. It's something I've researched for quite a number of years. I've put in considerable time. After that research was completed, since that time, the RCMP here in Canada have unionized, so it's changed the face of Canadian policing, goes towards more of an American model, but before I get into all that, and we go through this Bill 32 and its unconstitutionalism for the police, I'm going to give a shout out to Sanford Levinson, University Professor of Law out of Texas. He is uh, just a terrific writer. He has a number of books. I really recommend people who are looking at constitutionalism, amending constitutions, or the faith inside of constitutionalism. Read this man's books. He's just uh, an exceptional academic. I, I got to sit in with the class with him and uh, listen to this man. He had powerful insights. And one of them was on policing. We're going to get into the left and right narrative now. I'm going to do the analysis of the United States versus Canada and just how deeply entrenched Americans and policing, which really reflects the military. But I'm going to not get into too much of the military. We're just going to highlight that this really is about policing and unionization of policing and the rights they have. So... For one, there are 800,000 law enforcement officers in the United States of America. Of that 800,000, 98% of them are unionized, okay? You'll see statistics say 80%, but that's, that's inaccurate. I've gone through every single designation that you would say, union or non-union, and Unfortunately, for those academics who say 80%, it's actually 98%, and I'm going to break that down for you now. Starting on the federal level, we have the DEA and FBI. They're completely unionized. All their field agents, all their desk agents are all unionized. Um, we have the Federation of Police in the United States. They have over 330,000 members. They're not classified as a union because they do not carry out collective bargaining. However, they go into what I call the political government arena and they, they press. This is what Bill 32 aims to strip of the unions, which does go after the police in Alberta. But I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, we have the International Union of Police with the United States. That's the biggest organized labor group of union workers this is where you get where they say 80 percent is only unionized and then they classify it as those registered with a labor organization and they have collective bargaining okay um we have the international um bureau of police officers we have the international bureau of correction officers we have napo national um, Association of Police Officers. We have the National Board of Police Officers. We have the Lieutenants Association. We have the Captains Association. We have the Bureau of Prisons. We have Homeland Security. We have the Federal Protection and Security. We have the Marshals Union, Secret Service Union. We have the State Police Union. We have USA Immigration Union, we have Coast Guard, we have the National Guard. Those are all unionized organizations. Like I said, out of 800,000 officers, over 760,000 of them are represented directly by a union organization where they get their benefits even if they don't have the authority to collective bargain over those officers. So that's the big difference between the United States 
in Canada, but we're going to get into that. This is something for academics, and it's for the public, and I want Canadians and Albertans to understand this. When you talk about a union, there are three classifications for union. There's labor affiliation. What does that mean? That means individuals who group together, who are in a like trade or, or um, work scope, band together against an employer that can be government, um, corporation, society, the list goes on and on. And that group of individuals protected in both constitutions can go vote to become unionized, go through the labor relations process to protect their own interests. Now that's labor affiliation. That's the number one kind of union that we're going to talk about. Number two, there's government and political affiliation union, where it's a specific grouping of organizations to represent workers in a union environment who take that representation, use it for political or, or government interference, and they'll use that to propagate what they want to see for their membership, okay? And three is... A union is something that has collective bargaining rights, okay? So not all union associations or affiliations have collective bargaining rights, but many of the members do in other associations or unions, but they give the same purpose. And why I talk about this is because Bill 32 by Jason Kenney strips all unions basically of the political government interference type of unionization or association and why that's important for police because historically in America or in Canada which America does not do this to their police officers which again are 98% unionized but in Canada specifically Alberta Jason Kenney put in Bill 32 to say no you can no longer do that police officers now why this is disconcerting for police in, in Alberta specifically is that they don't have the same voice. They don't get to organize. We're going to get through a whole bunch of acts and bills and legislation that covers police in Alberta that's going to overlap the federal jurisdiction as well as the provincial jurisdiction, limiting their powers and what the individuals are capable of doing as police officers. So many of those unions have had to rely on on the political slash government side of, you know, peddling what they need to get for their membership. And that's why they do that. Of all unions, the police have to go that route because they're not given the same powers. Many of the fundamental freedoms of the individuals are protected by the charter, are deeply regulated for both military and police. But like I said, I'm not going to get into military at this time. So in Canada, 10% of the population, 10.3% as of the last recent statistical analysis, is unionized in Canada. That's, that's how many people working, only 10.3% are unionized. We've watched that rate of unionization go down, down, down in Canada specifically. Police unions, however, just after last year, since my run for office, RCMP, did win the right to unionize, and they have unionized, changing the face of the 33.8% unionized police are now 83.8% unionized police here in Canada. And that's right across every province now. It doesn't matter what grouping. I think only um, the sheriffs are outside of the union at this point in Alberta. Um, it was 30,196 out of 68,562 officers in this country, only less than half were unionized, 33.8%, a little over 30,000. But that changed, now it's uh, quite a bit. What we've watched with policing is the cost per person per capita of policing has tripled since 1971, since Pierre Elliott Trudeau. We've seen it triple. Now, to get into a few things here on the unconstitutionalism of Bill 32. I have here this little orange camera button. I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to change the screen. And we're going to look at 
just everything in Bill 32 that's against the police, some really one major, major attack on the police besides stripping them of, of their political ability to affect change for their members. We're going to look at a major, major constitutional breach, which has police officers up in arms and they're not able to speak out right now. Just so the public's aware, many of the union representatives for policing right here in Alberta are on stress leave right now. A lot's going on. They're freaked right out. Obviously, with Black Lives Matter is a portion from the states that has trickled over into Canada and municipalities have really gone on the offensive against police. People ask why that is on a left and right basis. Why police seemingly in some portions go for the left agenda and some portions go for the right agenda. That's very simple. We have those that are organized through labor affiliates and those that are organized through government and political intervention. Which is interesting because Bill 32, Jason Kenney's Bill 32, very liberal agenda to strip the police specifically of their ability to enact change through political or government lobbying and, you know, pressures, right? That's what they've historically used because individual members are unable to enact traditional in, um, individual rights and freedoms that many of us have. Police are... are you know, taken away from that. So I'm going to go into where we find all that. Uh, who's against the police unions that want those members that want to, um, you know, go for a more right narrative. And we're going to look at that right now. So I'm going to turn on this camera. It's going to be part of this video. Left and right narrative. We're going to look at police unions in North America, USA, and Canada. Major fundamental differences in organizational. Obviously, the USA has a very, very strong military presence in their law enforcement. And it does overlap. And there's a lot of unionization in military. But we're not going to look at that today. What we're going to look at is an answer to a question that was asked. And I urge all academics watching this, look at what I'm saying here. Analyze each organization, you'll find the truth in the merit of what I'm saying. When it comes to a left narrative or a right narrative, specifically policing because they are the largest unionized organizations in North America, which does overlap into all unionized environments, but because the percentages are so low, it's hard to determine. Policing, which I say goes right across the board to all labor organizations, is this. The left narrative comes when the individuals who are constitutionally mandated to organize unions, your local, by the individuals against government or employers, are right-leaning because they're not getting the influence of either government or or labor groups, organizations who are not mandated to collective bargain. Okay, I'm going to say that again. When you analyze any labor organization, you have to look at which unions who are regulated for collective bargaining are in bed with organizations not legally allowed to collective bargain for that union organization. This is where you get your left leaning. Right from USA, FBI, DEA, all the way down. It is only in the police association locals where you see the right leaning demonstrated. Because individuals are in charge of the collective bargaining. As soon as an organization is brought in, whether that's government or uh, another organization for a broader sense but has no right to collective, bar collectively bargain for you, you get a left narrative. And it gets more extreme the more branches you put on top of it. If you go back to the union design of just the local, unimpeded by all these organizations, you get a right-leaning narrative. This is the police officers themselves when we talk about police unions. 
and any union, when you get into just the local membership, you will ultimately end up with the right-leaning association, a union local, because it is pure sense of individual rights and freedoms. This is a fundamental truth. I challenge all academics to look at this, and you will find the overlap of organizations or governments on top of an organized group of labor that has a collective bargaining process. The more tiers you put on top of that, the more left you get, whether that's government or organization. And when it's just left with the local, the local members, how unions were established, you get a right-leaning narrative. Thank you. Okay, academics, police officers, and Albertans. This portion of the video is specifically Alberta. Constitutional powers defined in the Constitution for the provinces, and that's Alberta here. This is our Justice and Solicitor General. It's uh, not really an American power. You have the governor, and then you have all of his subordinates but in alberta we have the justice and solicitor general it's more of the crown side very different from the republic so it's not going to make tremendous sense to americans i guess but you know for albertans and canadians this is canada so in alberta we have safe and strong communities law enforcement in alberta covered by a table of contents here Ooh. The legislative framework, this is covered under the Police Act. This is all provincial. Municipal Governance Act, again, municipal powers or provincial powers outlined by the Constitution, province decides. Royal Canadian Mounted Police Act that overlaps inside the province because unlike the United States of America, in Canada, unlike any country in the world, our Royal Canadian Mounted Police can be on the provincial municipal level under lease conditions by a province or territory or even by that municipality governed under constitutional powers of the province. We have the Peace Officer Act, which is municipal and communities. We have the Security Services Investigation Act, Police Officers Collective Bargaining Act, which is a power of the province. Roles and responsibilities, it tells you clearly what the Government of Canada can do, Government of Alberta gets to do, what municipalities can do. Municipal councils over municipal policing. Again, the RCMP pops up there as they overlap provincial and municipal jurisdiction. We have the roles and responsibilities of police officers under the Criminal Code of Canada which makes everything a lot different comparatively to any other labor organization. We have police commissions and policing committees, which are government installed to control how these union police act. We have the chief of police. This is where we get into the left narrative over the police officers themselves. A lot of times the chief of police and the police commissions and policing committees often are in bed with the government, whether that's the federal or provincial level, to overstep those individual rights of the officers. And they're given these powers, and they're not elected. None of these people are elected. They're appointed by the government. So it really does take away the power of the people, and people complain about why unions can be, you know, the way they are administering the criminal code of Canada and how that overlaps a lot of constitutional rights and freedoms of organizations and com and individuals here in Canada or in a province. Well, that's how it gets there. Um, you have Alberta's serious response team. You got, again, the peace officers. You have security guards and private investigators and directors of law enforcement. Interesting enough here, we get into uh, roles and responsibilities of Law Enforcement Res Review Board, which is, again, the government of Alberta, Alberta Association of Police Governance, more government interference, Alberta Association of Police Governance, Alberta Association of Chief of Police, Alberta Federation of Police Associations, which, with that fourth one there, 
The Alberta Federation of Police Associations is as close to a labor organization as you're going to get. Um, they're often criticized of being too right-leaning, which uh, is what Jason Kenney's really targeted here. And he's used the above three associations, which are all strong ties to the government, to go against the Alberta Federation of Police Associations. So this is where we see all police officers getting all kinds of um, stress right now. We see police officers going on leave of absence who represent the officers, and a lot of, a lot of officers are all freaked out. So we're going to get into the next one and minimize. What did Bill 32 do? Well, under policing, this is the financial statement. We're looking at Section 40, or sorry, Article 40, Section 1 through 5. And there's parts in there. There are two unconstitutional portions of this, but I'm going to highlight Section 40, Article 5D at the very end. And this is the Minister May Make Regulations. And what is D? D over here is D, establishing different classes of police associations for the purpose of this section. There is your constitutional breach. One, the major one against the police unions here in Alberta specifically. It's unconstitutional. Why is that? Because governments, even the provincial governments, are not allowed to establish associations according to our constitution here in Canada. Freedom of association, it goes against 2D of our constitution of Canada and our charter of rights and freedoms and in the alienable right, the freedom of association. And in that, I'm going to read it to you. Freedom of association is guaranteed under section 2D. The right provides individuals the right to establish belong to and maintain any sort of organization unless that organization is otherwise illegal. And guess what? It's not. Because new Supreme Court of Canada decisions on collective bargaining, the right to strike and communications by employers during union organizing activities. This was done here in uh, July or sorry, February of 2015, and we saw the RCMP just unionize, and they won that right under the Supreme Court. The RCMP is now unionized in Canada, and they're represented under collective bargaining. The Federation of Police here in Alberta and the Federation of Police in Canada were already organized. That's your municipalities, your major cities, and other municipalities throughout this province. In other provinces, they have the right to organize and they're free from anyone taking on 2D. It has been awarded by the Supreme Court and Jason Kenney uses sec or Section 40, Article 5D to strip the Federation of Police, Alberta Federation of Police and the RCMP here in Alberta on the municipal and provincial and federal level of their rights to be free to let their individuals organize their unions, which was ruled just here, spring of this year, constitutional for Canada. Individuals get to organize their unions, not governments, not provincial governments. Jason Kenney's major breach against the police here in Alberta and all police in Canada, he oversteps with, again, Section 40, Article 5, D at the very end, sneaks in that he is going to decide what associations are what through his ministry, and that's illegal in Canada. This is a constitutional fight. Thank you.